make this clear. When you first came to uh, uh, Anheuser-Busch, Busch Gardens, SeaWorld, they weren't using positive reinforcement, well, right? Well, we we at SeaWorld developed, and then Anheuser-Busch bought us back in the 80s, late 80s. And that about four years after that, I was already, at that time when Anheuser-Busch bought us, I was at SeaWorld um, San Antonio. And I was in charge of all the training at SeaWorld San Antonio. And when they bought us, they said, we want somebody, we need somebody that can uh, coordinate all the parks. So they put me in charge of all four SeaWorlds at the time. So at that time, I coordinated everything, got us training the exact same way, uh, in the most positive way we could. I, I put some curators that and, and guys that I had worked with in charge in those particular parks, and we really formed a, a really good, solid team. Um, I always say I wasn't the smartest person in the world, but I was smart enough to put people smarter than me in positions that would help us do a good job. And that's the way I, what I feel I did. I felt like uh, most leadership, that's what it takes. Put people that know how to do certain things. So I had some curators that were great at organization. I used them to organize things. I had other trainers that were just great animal people, and I put them in charge of the animal part of it. You know, so, And then we were able to really put a team together. Well, shortly after that, um, Anheuser-Busch said, all right, Thad, you're doing a good job there. We want you to take over the Busch Gardens Parks. We got some problems over there. And one of the first things that happened when I went to Bush Gardens was I, I was there looking at the elephant program. Right. And I knew they had the old style system. And the new style of training elephants was just, you know, starting to really, really uh, happen at zoos. And, and you don't Aquarius. have to go into great de- yeah. depth, but what, what, what was that old style just uh, – um, uh, being an aggressive boss to the elephants? Is that what would well, be the- kind way to describe it that's a real kind way to describe okay. it. okay the, the the old style was 4,000 years old that's how elephants have been trained for 4,000 years and it's basically a fear-based style of training the animals you tell the animal to do something and you make them do it and how that is done is with a, a tool called an ancus um, it's a basically a club it can be anywhere from you know, two to three feet long. It's got a hook with a sharp point on it, and it's got a point on the end of it, a lot of them. They're all different styles of ancus. And the, the, the animal is taught that he either does it or he gets punished. So a lot of puni- positive punishment. What do they do and with the what, hook? How do they... Well, the hook is used for different things, like if you want to get the elephant to open his mouth. Right. And they start when the animals are really young. Right. So that they learn this that they have to do it when they're young. And then as they get older, they don't realize how big they are compared to a person, and they still fear this ancus, and they still fear that person. Um, But the ancus is used in a way where you actually, uh, if you want the elephant to put his head up high, you would stick the hook in his mouth and poke the roof of his mouth, and it hurts. So they lift their their head um, to avoid the pain. Um, so it's punishing, but it's also negative reinforcement. They do it to release the pressure. They lift their head. That stops the pain. And if the elephant refuses to do something, uh, it gets as bad as they hit him. They smack him in the forehead, and it's not a pretty sight. Um, at Bush Gardens, when I first took over the training there, one of the first things I did was I went to August Bush. And Anheuser Bush and I said we've got to change over to a protected contact system, which is something that got established with AZA, the American Zoo and uh, Aquarium Association, um, who reg- who uh, accredits all the zoos, right. all the best zoos in the in the U.S. Um, and they they said yes, we want everybody to transfer to that system. Like when you first come to. August Bush and and discuss this. Do they look at you like with cross eyes? Like what what is he well, talking about? Or is it a gradual thing? Or how does that work? Well, what was awesome about Anheuser Bush and that they are a, they were a great company. I mean they they put a lot of money into our parks. We had the best facilities and and he he was just an awesome leader. 
August Bush was. August Bush the third. Right. Awesome leader. I learned a lot from him about how to lead people and how to to get things done. Um, but no, I went to August Bush and I explained it to him. But you have to remember, by that time, I was in that position of corporate curator for four years, so I had a relationship with him. I taught him everything we did with our killer wells, and that's the kind of boss he was. He came in and he was basically a beer company, right? right. Well, he spent days with us when we when he first took over SeaWorld. He spent days learning what we did. How do you train? I actually put together with some of my other curators an eight-hour presentation for him on how we train, what we do with our killer wells, and he loved it. And he always stayed interested in any time he was in Orlando, he would come by and see the whales and say how things going. And so I had a relationship. So it was fairly easy. I actually, uh, myself and the zoological director, Brad Andrews, we went up to a meeting up in St. Louis and we explained it to him. I have, we had a presentation ready and we said, we have to change over to this system because it's just not right that the way, and he basically really didn't know that that's, that's how it was done and, or that it could be done in a, a more positive way. So he gave us six million dollars right there to build a protected contact barn, and we uh, built the barn and we switched over from the old style to the new style in one day. In fact, that's when I moved Otto Fad, uh, who was I worked had worked with killer whales with me for twenty years. I went to Otto and I said, Otto, we're going to change over. I want you to take over the elephants. He goes, I've never seen and I've never worked with elephants. I said, you'll learn. You know how to use positive reinforcement. So we're going to teach these elephants a whole new style. The elephants thought they died and went to heaven when they moved from that one system to the next. I guess the equivalent would be what we've learned in society that um, you just don't beat your child. You don't take a, a stick and pound on them in the classroom or at home. And we've learned and evolved and we all said, yeah, there's a better way to do it. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Now, the reason it's been, there's pushback on it, in my opinion, is because it's a something you have to relearn. Uh, it is harder to use positive reinforcement all the time than it is to use negatives. Think about it in your own life. You know, let's say, let's say your child asks you, uh, I, want, I want to go outside and play. Can I go play? And the answer is no. Why do you say no so easily and yes comes harder? It's because when you say yes, now you have to do something, right? When you say no, end of story. I can sit on the couch and still watch TV. Hmm. Okay. But you're, when giving, I say, you're giving me ideas for my seven-year-old. Yeah. Hmm. When, when you say yes, that means you have to do something. You have to go outside and watch them if they wanted to go play. You have to get up and go get them something if they want to play with a game. Or you have to play the game with them. When you say no, you don't. So it's easier to use negative and to go negative and to punish is easier because there's not a thought process in it like you have to have when you use positive reinforcement. When you use positive reinforcement to get them to do it, you have to be thinking about it more. And to me, that is why it's hard for people to change. Well, and you're, like you said, it goes back um... 4,000 years, it's yeah. all we, we know. You know, yeah, force, and, force does work with the military. It works in a lot of different aspects of, of life. And there are places for it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say that you don't use it ever. Um, and in certain situations, let's face it, we have to. It's, it's, it's sort of hard to talk a country that wants to take your country over into not doing it using positive reinforcement, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying that the military is wrong in how they approach things at all. But even the military's gotten a lot more positive with their, with their people. Yeah, good point. It's, it's, it's changing. It's evolving, and it will continue to evolve. Yeah. Um, so those early days were fun. They were good. Um, and it seems like we've sort of learned the blueprint of what to do with these type of creatures and – has it changed much since those early days? I mean, have oh, we even learned more since then? Oh, it's changed tremendously. It's continuing to change. And I tell new trainers all the time, uh, I, I've done a, I did a presentation at the ABMA, which is the Animal Behavior Management Alliance. And I, I did a presentation. They asked me to, to do a keynote presentation on the past, present, and future of animal training. Mm -hmm. So I went in the past and explained how we did things back then, and it was more about dominance training and things like that, and then how it started to evolve when the marine mammal 
industry started up, when we started training Dolphin, and why it changed the way it did. Uh, with Dolphin, okay, how are you going to make them do something? They're in the pool swimming around. You can't make them do it. You had We had to use more positive things. We had to, and that's when we started using a clicker. That's when we started to tell them, that's exactly what I want. You click the clicker, that tells them, yes, you did it correctly, now you're gonna receive a reward. And all those things evolved through the years. And uh, I constantly tell new trainers, if we're doing, if we're training the same way, even though we're doing it the best we know right now, but if you're still only doing that, 20 years from now, and you haven't evolved even more and found better ways, then you're not doing your job. It's always, always about finding a better way to do things. I mean, think about it. That, sh that really is in everything, and it's no different in training. We should never think we know everything. I learn something new every time I work with another animal. No more roach on Florida TV.